What I'd like to do now is to talk a little bit about the sequence we have inside 002. But the best way to learn about it is to have a play with it. So I've got a very simple sort of analog sawtooth bass type sound here. And what I'm going to do is set up a very simple, very memorable, quite commonly used bass line that you'll spot. So first thing I need to do is go to the sequencer page, which I do by pressing the button for the sequencer. I've got an empty sequence loaded. And what I need to do first of all is assign the notes to it. So to assign the notes, I will simply hold this button down and press some notes. There we go, so I've now played eight notes into the sequencer. And when I press play, you can hear them playing. What I'll do now is I need to change the time of the sequencer to make the steps a little bit quicker. Now you've got a shortcut here, you can change each knob one at a time and change the step values, but if you want to change them all at the same time, you can hold the button down and turn the knob and they will all change. There we go, so there we go, I now have eighth step across all the steps on the sequencer. And I press play now, so you can hear it's playing. There are several other sort of management or control rows. Above the, the step length row you have the velocity row, this is the velocity for each step, and the gate length for each row. 25% is a bit short. So again what I can do is I can hold this button down, turn it up and I'll go for 75%. There you go. Uh, again I can change the velocity so I can have the first one nice and bright and then turn the others down a little bit. And the next one bright and we can have sort of velocity changing as we go along. Now the next thing, one of the things I would like to do for this one is to give it a bit of life. So I'm going to put in a, let's go for resonance, let's have a row that controls the resonance. So I, to assign a parameter to a row, hold the button down and turn the knob you want it to assign to. So you can immediately see on the display it's now changed to resonance. So I will start with a note that's got lots of resonance, one that's got next to nothing, we'll have one that's got a bit more, one that's got lots of resonance, we'll have one at halfway and so on. So when I press play now, the sequence is not only playing the notes, but it's also playing the CC parameter or parameter if you like, to control the resonance. So you can do that, this is quite a good little feature. One of the things you can also do is you can turn notes on and off to do this. As you can see, all the lights are lit red. To turn a note off, just simply press the buttons of the notes you don't want and they go out. So that's how you turn notes on and off and give yourself a rest. You can skip notes. To do this, go to the note row that controls the step length and press the buttons and the blue lights will turn on. So if I do this, I should just get three notes and I can drop the notes back in. So you can have hours of endless fun with the sequencer. It's important to note that of these rows, there are 12 rows in total that you can assign anything you want to. So in this case here I have a row assigned to notes and a row assigned to resonance. I can have a row assigned to another note if I want. Um, so let's do that. Again just hold the note down and we'll go. There we go. So now I have two notes playing. I've got some notes skipped so I'll turn them back on. So you can have hours of fun with this skipping, adding rows, adding rows, adding parameters, and a parameter row can be pretty much everything on the whole front panel. So one of the other features that we can do with the sequencer is you have the ability to send some rows to the internal synth engine, the external synth engine, or to both at the same time. To do that, you scroll around to where it says here and you've got a collection of both. So at the moment, those notes are sent to both the internal engine and external MIDI. I can press select and I can select external, internal, or both. So you have the option there, so you could have a sequence where some things are controlling the internal and some things are controlling your external MIDI equipment. The other thing that's useful to know about the sequencer is there are some different modes. So in this case I have it running in forward mode, which you can see here from the setup page. If I press the mode button I can change it to backwards, so I'll play backwards. And much like the arpeggiator we've got the pendulum modes, 
the shuffle modes, the random modes, and all the other bits and pieces. So there's plenty of modes to choose from. You can also change the number of uh, steps there are. And you have up to 32 steps if you wish. So if I set it to 32, to get to the next eight steps on these uh, knobs, I can press this and it jumps forward to the page. So you can see at the top here it shows 9 to 16. So now I have steps 9 to 16 on my sequencer. Press it again, I go 17 to 24, and again 25 to 32. So you have a lot of access and quick control to all the parameters and things you might want to use during your step sequencing. So also in the setup mode, we have the uh, swing control. So I've gone back to my eight step pattern and I can adjust the swing. Just the swing to give you a nice sort of slight groove or quite something quite major or back to zero for rock solid timing. We also have the ability to do a legato mode. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to turn off those extra rows that I have added. If I turn into that row and I'll set that to zero so that row is now gone. So here I have my simple sequence and what I'll do is I will turn on legato for some of the steps and you'll hear them step through. So you can hear there the notes sustained and not re-triggered. Particularly useful for bass lines if you want to accentuate some notes or not other notes. So again we can do that, we'll have the first couple of notes accentuated. Uh, we'll do that. There we go. So now I've got two notes at the first part of each set of four that are legato. So you can build up some very rhythmical patterns with that. One of the other things that's worth mentioning is that each step has its own length. So if I want, I can have a couple of very short notes at the start. So I'll have a couple of sixteenths and I'll have one that's slightly longer there. So let's go for that. We'll turn those legato modes. So again, more control over the rhythm and the feel of your own sequence. So let's give a quick example of how to use the uh, velocity in this sound in a sequence to quite good effectiveness. So I'll load a, a sequence. Again here I've got an empty sequence which is just quite boring. I will change the note lengths to, uh, let's have a nice fast one. Actually not 32, so it might be a bit quick. There we go. And what I'll do now is I'll go and change the velocities. I'll have a nice punchy velocity at the start, something a bit slower. I'll have a very low one there, about halfway there. And you can change the values whilst it's running, so I'll do that from here on in. Now if I want to transpose the sequence, I can hold this down whilst it's playing, and just press another note. So it's that simple to build up. Now suppose I want to change a note in the sequence, I can hold that down and just press this. Press another note. So you can insert notes as and when you see fit. like the B flat, I'll go back to an F. So, so it's very quick and easy to build up a sequence based on some notes, a rhythmical thing and some feelings.